at you guys because this one is always just implied, okay? So, okay, so take a moment, make sure you have all these things down in this chart. So hit pause in your DVD player or something so you can get this down before we can go on. Okay, so just to show you guys how you can apply all this hybridization knowledge that you just gained, let me give you an example of a question that you can see, okay? Okay, so let's start off with a pretty easy example. Label the hybridization, bond angle, and shape of the designated atoms, okay? So this atom, or this atom, and this atom. And you're gonna solve this by thinking back to that chart that we just constructed, okay? So think about how many sigma bonds or lone pairs that that atom has to it, then think about the hybridization, the bond angle, and the shape, okay? So, hey, let's look at this nitrogen first. How many sigma bonds or lone pairs does that nitrogen have, okay? So if you look at this guy, he has one, two, three sigma bonds, and hey, one lone pair. So he has a combination of four sigma bonds slash lone pairs, okay? So this guy would have a hybridization of sp3, right? If he's sp3, that means he's gonna be tetrahedral. And if he's tetrahedral, that means he's gonna have bond angles of 109 degrees, okay? So that's how you do this first one. Just look at how many sigma bonds and lone pairs he has. He has a total of four combination of four sigma bonds and lone pairs, meaning he's sp3, tetrahedral, and 109 degrees. Let's do the same thing for this carbon, okay? So this carbon right here, he has one, two, three sigma bonds, right? Because hey, all atoms are directly connected by these sigma bonds, but hey, any extra bonds are pi bonds. Any extra bonds on top of those sigma bonds are pi bonds, like this one that I've left in black. So this guy made one, two, three sigma bonds, meaning that he's gonna be sp2. And if he's sp2, that means he's gonna be trigonal planar with bond angles of 120 degrees. Okay, so whenever you're trying to determine the shape, the bond angle, or the hybridization of an atom, only look at the number of sigma bonds or lone pairs that the atom has, okay? So only sigma bonds or lone pairs, not pi bonds, okay? Those don't affect the hybridization bond angle or the shape, okay? So let me put up another example for you guys to try out. Okay, so this is a little bit more visually challenging than the last example because I've kind of condensed the structure of this. I haven't completely drawn out all the bonds to all the hydrogens here. Okay, so hey, make sure to take a note of that when you're trying this problem. Okay, so let's look at this nitrogen first. And the first thing you're gonna do is identify how many sigma bonds and lone pairs that nitrogen has on it, right? So, hey, this nitrogen has a lone pair here. He has a sigma bond here, right? Let me erase this for a second. And he's also connected to two hydrogens. What I don't want you to do is look at this nitrogen and say, okay, there's one sigma bond, there's a lone pair. So that's a total of two, two sigma bonds and lone pairs, okay? So, hey, that would mean it's linear, 180 degrees. Did any of you guys choose that? Okay, well, don't forget that this nitrogen is also bonded to two other hydrogens. So just because I didn't draw these bonds out doesn't mean that they're not there, okay? So you have to take into account for these other two. So, I, so there's actually gonna be a total of one, two, three sigma bonds and that lone pair, meaning that this nitrogen is gonna have a total of four sigma bonds slash lone pair, a combination of four sigma bonds and lone pairs, making it sp3, making it tetrahedral, with bond angles of 109 degrees. Just like for this carbon, you can't ignore that there's two hydrogens also bonded to this carbon, okay? So, hey, if this trips you up, make sure to draw out the individual bonds so you don't accidentally miscalculate the number of bonds, okay? So, hey, this carbon is gonna have one, 
two, so one, two, three, four single bonds, four sigma bonds, meaning that he's gonna have sp3 hybridization, he's gonna be tetrahedral with bond angles of 109 degrees. Let's go on to this carbon, okay? So, hey, if it trips you up, draw out this hydrogen's bond. Okay, so this carbon is gonna have one, two, three sigma bonds and one pi bond, but you ignore pi bonds, right? So just count one, two, three sigma bonds. If he has three sigma bonds, then he's gonna be trigonal planar. He's gonna have sp2 hybridization, right? And bond angles of 120 degrees. And hey, last but not least, let's look at this carbon. And hey, make sure to draw out this hydrogen if you're still having trouble seeing that there's gonna be another bond there, okay? And this carbon is gonna make one sigma bond there and one sigma bond there. Remember, everything on top of that one sigma bond is just a multiple bond, a pi bond, and those don't count for when you're determining hybridization, trigonal, or hybridization shape or bond angle. So, hey, this guy made one, two sigma bonds, so that means he's gonna be sp2 hybridized, linear shape with bond angles of 180 degrees. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about covalent bonding. Molecular orbital theory. This told us that bonding occurs by overlapping orbitals and sharing electrons. Orbital hybridization theory tells us that orbitals mix together to create the largest possible overlap in bonding. The type of hybridization, sp, sp2, or sp3, determines the shape of the compound, its bond angles, and how many single bonds it can make. Okay, so. Hey, hopefully this unraveled a little bit of the mystery behind covalent bonding for you guys and you understand it a little bit better.